If your podcast isn't getting big listener numbers, should you be worried? Communication Generation. Get your ideas into ears. Hi, I'm Steve Randall. One of the questions that I always get asked is about listener numbers. Audience size may matter for several reasons, including the ability to monetize the podcast, getting your ideas into as many ears as possible, and the sense of validation that it may give you. But getting too hung up on these numbers is not always helpful, partly because it can take time to build up a decent audience size, and because unless your podcast is date-specific, listeners won't just find you now, but in the future too, so you're creating content that will be around for potentially ever. There's also the way that audience numbers are measured. Typically, this is downloads, and many podcast hosting services use IAB certified data. But most podcast apps allow automatic downloads of new episodes, so that provides an overview of your subscribers or followers rather than actual listens. Some data can be found about who's listening and for how long, especially on the big podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify, but this is not all presented in the same way and it can be confusing. The most compelling reason I can give you for not focusing only on this metric is the wider question of what is most valuable, the numbers you reach or how engaged that audience is. Now, this is also a big topic for measuring the effectiveness of other digital content. Would you rather have 50,000 followers on your chosen social media platform who never like, share or comment on your posts or a 1,000 highly engaged followers who boost your content with these personal validations. Radio is another medium which often gets excited about listener numbers, especially when they're trying to sell you advertising or sponsorship. Stations love to shout about the number of people they reach, but the official measuring of this, in the UK certainly, is based on just five minutes listening across a week. Five minutes listening across a week a week. It's hardly a massive endorsement. However, when combined with metrics showing how long each listener listens, a bigger market share can be a more valuable goal. But for podcasts, your aim should be a decent number of listeners listening to each episode from start to finish every time you published one, and then rating, commenting, and sharing your podcast. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Getting people to listen to the whole episode largely rests on one thing. Making your content compelling. Getting listeners to do some marketing for you by sharing and commenting means asking them to do so and maybe offering an incentive. And getting listeners in the first place is the same as for any other product or service. You have to tell them about it. You have to do the marketing using all the usual channels, including social media, SEO, paid advertising, press releases, your email list, and so on. But back to the actual numbers. Suppose you got 20 listeners for each episode. Is that bad news? That depends on your perspective. Imagine if you got 20 people to sit in a room and listen to you on a regular basis. Would that be bad news? Now, obviously, there's more to this. 20 people in a room or 20 people listening to your podcast is only good if they're either helping to spread your ideas wider or if they're reacting to your call to action. If those 20 podcast listeners end up being your best clients or customers or help bring you those who are, then it's a win. Now, the caveat to that is return on investment. There are many companies that will charge you eye-watering fees to record and produce your podcast. If you're paying crazily high production costs, it'll be harder to get ROI. So make sure you choose a company that charges a fair price for the work involved, like uh, communication generation, perhaps. You'll find us at cgpods.com. And until next time, Thanks for listening and join me again when I help you get your ideas into ears. Ears.